Hey, I'm Jelle, and when I'm not making games, I very rarely like to go outside. Enjoying the nice weather on my bike gives me that much needed new energy. The weather was nice, there wasn't even a single- Oh no, is that a droplet I feel? I can't go outside like that. Let's make an indoor home training biking game. So, my plan was to put myself in a game that I could control with my actual bike. That way, I could feel like I'm outside doing some exercise when I'm actually just playing a game. First step, get myself into the computer. I could take a couple of photos and measure myself, but that's way too much measuring. Rather, I took a bunch of pictures of myself from all possible angles and created a 3D scan of the whole environment using photogrammetry. The software calculates the 3D shape based on all different photos that look similar, but are shot from a slightly different angle. Ta-da! Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I don't look like that. Luckily, I have my iPad with Face ID that can get much better face scans. Aha! That's more like it. Now, I could use a face scan for a more precise mesh of my head and a photogrammetry mesh for the proportions of my body after placing some polygons and painting some textures. I recreated myself in 3D. Are you able to tell which is the real one and which is me? I know I don't. First step done. Next step, the bike. Luckily, the bike is a rather straightforward shape. So I only took one picture and recreated the bike, including the crank set, the pedals, and a working handlebar. Now I could put myself in the game. I created the script that would move the wheels and pedals according to the current player's speed. Rather than using pre-made animations to match my feet and hands to the bike, I used inverse kinematics. This means that instead of controlling each bone's rotation separately, I could set a goal for each limp that the hands and feet would automatically go to, calculating the rotation of the bones for me. This worked great, especially when you are planning to go pretty fast. Woo! I set up the bike with some wheel colliders to make it controllable, but it kept falling over. The complex physics of staying upright on a bike was a little too complicated. So, it was time for some physics cheating. I first tried to lower the center of mass below the ground so the bike could stay upright. That worked, but he basically became a swinging pendulum as soon as I took a corner. I tried using four wheels close together, but then the player wouldn't lean into the corner like those real racers do. Then I thought about this strange three-wheeled motorbike that has an automatic leaning feature by moving the wheels up and down. Genius. So that's what I did as well. When you turn left, the left wheel moves slightly up and the right wheel goes down and they move the other way when you turn right. So the player automatically leans into the corner. Perfect. Now let's race. Wait. There is no track yet. I wanted a bunch of different tracks, so I wouldn't have to do the same movements all the time. But I also didn't want to make all these tracks. So there was only one option, create them procedurally. I knew one thing for sure, the track had to be a loop. So I started with that. Then I moved each point on the loop a random smooth distance away from the center to create the unique shape of the track. Then I defined the cross section of the track and extruded it all the way along the path. And ta-da! We have infinite tracks. I also created some fences using the same random pattern with an offset and added some buildings in the background. A perfect little cityscape. The smooth transition between the tracks is also pretty cool. Now, I was racing and all, but I was getting kind of lonely. I mean, there was no one to race against. I needed some AI that would be able to control a bike and complete a lap. My first test went rather special. I mean, they were moving forward. Sometimes, after a lot of tweaking and trying out a bunch of different stuff, I created a system where the AI would steer to a checkpoint and once it reached that checkpoint, it would move to the next one. Those checkpoints were the points I used to create the track. I told the AI to go to every tenth point on the track. Ah, way better. Still a little janky, but that's just part of the race. Now, it wouldn't be a race if you didn't know who was in the first place, of course. I added a placing system that would keep track of each player's position and rank them according to how far they are along the track. Okay, so now that the game works, it was time to create a controller. I mean, turn the bike into a controller. Now, how was I going to go about this? Let me explain. A bike works very simple. You just pedal and steer. For the pedaling part, I used a magnetic sensor, like those alarms that go off when you open the door. The sensor works with a piece of metal that closes the electrical circuit when a magnet gets close to it. So if I mount this to my bike and put the magnet on the rotating wheel, I could get a signal each time the magnet passes the sensor. If I then know the circumference of the wheel, 
I can calculate the speed. For the steering, I use the potentiometer, a knob that returns a value that increases and decreases when you turn it. Using this data, I could convert it pretty easily to a rotation angle for the steering wheel. I fixed the knob to a Lego axle and mounted a racing wheel on top of that. Then I would stick it to the front of the bike and it would turn together with the handlebars. So let's build it! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Yale Indoor Biking Simulation World Championships. The stage is being prepared. I wonder what we will get today. Oh, wonderful shape. Today's contesters are... Not Yale. Not Yale. Not Yale. And last but not least, Yale. Let the countdown begin. 3, 2, 1, start. And we're off. Yale starts off quite slow. He will need to do better than that if he wants to take the crown. Not Yale, not Yale, or neck and neck. Oh, Yale moves on to the third place. He's really giving it his all. He's stuck in between Not Yale and Not Yale. What can he do? These riders are really playing it dirty. Not Yale makes a big move with a big swing. Be sure to keep both wheels on the ground. We don't want any crashes here. Up ahead is the last corner. Oh. What does Yale do now? He takes the inside of the corner and takes the lead. Will he be able to keep it? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, he does it. Yale Vermandre is the first indoor biking simulation world champion. What a race! This will be one for the books, I am sure of that. Phew! What an adventure. As always, I've put the source files for the frameworks on GitHub. And if you want, you can play a keyboard version of the game on itch.io. And I promise you won't need to do any physical activity to play it. But you can if you want, of course. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed my suffering. And subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And I'll see you guys next time, where I will await the clear skies once more.